The Rust Killer, I actually haven't watched this. This new language is better than Rust. It is Zig. When I first heard about the Zig programming language, I was skeptical. Why do we need another language in the systems programming space? Agreed. We already have C, C++, Rust, and Carbon. He forgot to go when he heard C++, by the way. A kind of a miss. You should always be spitting that crap clean out. In theory. But I gave it some thought, and there actually is a place for this language in the systems programming ecosystem, and I think you should love it too. In this video... By the way, this is low-level learning. If you haven't seen low-level learning, great YouTuber. Good friend. Really appreciate him. Uh, he's given me a lot of advice. Well, we've worked out uh, quite a bit. We've actually been trying to figure out a way to even do a little collab, and I think this would be a lot of fun. We're going to talk about what Zig is, where it fits in the systems programming architecture. I can tell you where it fits in. And my thoughts on the language. Let's get into it. So here we're on the website for the Zig language. We're at ziglang.org, and Zig is kind of... Does Flip Edits edit this? Does my editor edit this guy? I'm not sure. I actually don't even know. Does it, Because that little transition, that was very flippy. I, I'm actually convinced right now that this guy gets his video edited by my editor. All right, anyways. Kind of a cool language because it's built around three simple principles to keep it as simple as possible. Okay, First, like the language is meant to have no hidden control. Dude, there's nothing more than I hate in the universe than that. I hate this. I hate this. I hate hidden control flow. And what does it mean by hidden control flow? That's going to be try catch, right? Try catch. You don't know where the hell you're going. When a function throws, you don't know. You don't know where it's going. You don't know how, where it's going to get to. All you know is that the moment that it throws, your whole program's going to shit the bed and you don't even know why. I think I made a nice little flow somewhere around here. Did I? Oh, come on. I made this really nice diagram. Oh, yeah, there it is. Whoop. Look at this. Here, like, you can imagine, this is your stack, right? This is the stack. And say this function throws. If this function throws, which function is going to catch it above you? And even worse, when it comes specifically to JavaScript, there is nothing that identifies if a function throws. And to me, that is JavaScript's worst design feature. I think I've spent, I, I bet you there's been more server 500s. There's been more wasted cycles. There's been more wasted requests. There's been more production problems purely because people do not know that a function does or does not throw. You just don't even know. So you get all these weird production problems, like one out of a thousand, and you have no clue why. And it's because some function you just don't even know throws. You know what I mean? I just hate it. I just hate it. So I love that. That's one thing I'll always love about this language is that. All right, let's go back into it. Let's get back into it. I think Go handles it better. I do think Go handles errors better than JavaScript because even though that Go's handling of errors is clunky, it's still error first. Error as values. There's nothing better than errors as values. You must maintain that as your mantra because the moment that you don't have that, your program just goes to shit. It's just every time. Control flow, meaning... Of course, go, hand go error handling is ugly. But the point is, it's better than not knowing, right? If I had to choose, it goes Rust or like the, the result syntax. Go, which is like verbose handling. And then guess, guess when error handling. Did you catch it? <laughs> no, I'm not a great catcher, okay? Just, I just suck at it. Code only does what you say it does. There are no secret features. Yeah, I love it. Two, there are no hidden memory allocations, I meaning don't like that this one. the code only allocates the memory that you ask it to. Nothing happens. I know that sounds really nice, but the reality is that if I'm not mistaken, you also have to like, you have to you have to give an allocator to the thing, and then after you give an allocator, you have to use the allocator to allocate on like the stack. But for me, I just want to say struct whatever, and it just allocates right there on the stack. If I've defined heap-based objects, then it just heaps, right? Like string in Rust, it's like there's a heap or effect in Rust. Like I want that to be a real thing. I don't want to have to think about it all the time. So I'm not a huge fan of this, though I can see why this would be probably really great in a, you know, in embedded, the embedded world to really have like a strong uh, wrapping around what can and how it can be allocated. I could see why that'd be great. Yeah, I tried to write my own memory arena once. It's extremely hard. I wrote it in C for WASM before, like, without using uh, a bind gen or whatever it's called, uh, and, and scriptum. It was really hard.
it's in the background. I got it wrong. In three, every there's time. no preprocessor and no macros, meaning the code that you write is the only code that gets put into your program. No. <sighs> so this is a good, this is a really good debate, which is, are macros bad? I would say preprocessor style macros, something that you see in C++, like define, those are effectively the devil. Can we all agree those are the actual devil walking around on the earth, casting those with he, with he wills into the, to the pits of hell? But macros, like Rust style macros, I love them. Every macro I've used from Rust, I am happy it's a macro. Loving it loving it right and that's because it's a different one it has a very strict syntax in which you can go to you can follow it's very tightly integrated with the lsp it makes sense you identify identifiers uh expansions all that kind of stuff uh think about rust without i know rust without derived macros would be a terrible language i wouldn't use it and i'm not convinced that zig's version zig does effectively have this what zig has is something that i would almost argue is more powerful than rust macros but also i think harder to visualize meaning that it has code that executes during compile time and code that executes during runtime so compile time compiles into more code so it's it's like an expansion but it's written in zig so it's a little different let's see what he has to say here sorry no let's just keep less. on going this comes at a time where i think a lot of languages that are meant to be low level like c for example are kind of bloated with their run times like libc you know the program does a lot of stuff before it actually gets to the code that you write yep. which could force you to spend your time debugging the language and not your code itself which is kind of the whole mantra of the language right keep in mind that everything i say in this video is at the time that zig is in 0, 0100 so it's not even at a 1.0 yet so everything in this video is subject to ch zero one zero zero was the most confusing way to say uh zero ten <laughs> zero one zero zero nice binary solo there low level learning what's what are you doing out there that's a ten it's not a one zero change so what are the principles surrounding zig and where does it fit in all the other languages i would say that zig is one level above assembly and one level below c one level above assembly one level below c but I thought we didn't do jokes below the sea level. It's a shitty reference to TikTok. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, all right. Uh, let's just keep on going. Stop it. Shut up. Obviously, because the program has human readable syntax that is not just you transposing memory I'm in sorry. and out of registers. I'm sorry. But it's one level below C because you are actually given finer control of your code than C, but without all the bloat. When you make a program in C, there, there. Did he just say C and bloat? I mean, I, I know what he's trying to say, but still. C, I know, I know, that's what I heard that I was like, C is bloated, what? <laughs> I think Chad's like, what the hell does that mean? What do you mean by C is bloated? All right, let's find out what he means by C is bloated. This is, a, that, it's just funny. I know what he's trying to say. In some sense, Zig feels like a higher level language than C. And it does, it has a lot of higher level abstractions, but it's also in some sense, I understand what he means by it's lower level, right? It by default links in the C standard library. Uh, it does a lot of stuff under the hood that you're not necessarily aware of. Here in Zig, the program is a little simpler. Granted, there is an imported standard library, but it's just not as bulky as oh, C. Oh gosh, I did that So again. again, a level of- I believe he means stud, right? As we learned yesterday, it's called stud. It's not called, it's standard. No one says standard, okay? We all call it stud, right? Right? above assembly one level below c oh stood let's go stood, into sorry. the developer ecosystem which Not is one stud. of the things that i'm stood. happiest with with, uh, with zig that makes it kind of fun uh for a new programmer if you install the zig compiler which i've already done we'll make a, a bit like a folder called i do have one thing to say right before he keeps on going he said fun for developer stuff when i tried to do an http library i think i was uh, i mean this must have been three months ago when i played with zig i had to download the source code and just put it into my project I hate that. Pa without a dependency manager, your language can get the f out of here, okay? I don't want it. Like, if without it, I, I need dependencies because I don't want to, I, like, there's the, it's the same reason why I don't use DWM window manager, right? I don't want to, I don't want to be in charge of patching, okay? I don't want to be in charge of patching. I want your code to be your code. I don't want some dingleberry flopping around inside of this third-party code 
and doing a small little change for us. And then the next thing you know, it's like incomprehensible and incompatible to update ever again. I just, I, I have a very hard time with that, but we'll see. Called Zig video. When you run the Zig compiler, you're given this really nice menu that kind of reads like the cargo program in Rust. You're able to do things like initialize a Rust, by the way, library, initialize a folder for an exe, initialize a folder for a What's library, do a bunch of things a like thing? AST checking, running an entire integrated test suite that runs inside the program as well, which is a whole other video that I'll make later on this. Also, the Zig compiler can translate. Do you hear his dog itching himself in the background? Listen closely. Listen closely, you can hear the dog. Video that I'll make later on this. Also, the Zig compiler can translate C code into Zig code and also act in as a drop in <laughs> archiver C uh, compiler and C compiler, a bunch of cool stuff for Zig. So let's go ahead and make a project real quick and we'll do uh, Zig init exe. So here it's created the repo for us, just like Cargo would, and we have our code here, main.zig. A lot of comments here, but basically all this does is it prints out some code and the code says all your code base are belong to us. So to build that, pretty simple, nothing crazy going on here. We'll do zig uh, build and then run. So that'll run the compiler. It'll invoke the LLVM backend to output the object, and then we get our executable, which gets ran, all your code base are belong to us. Another really, really cool feature that I like about Zig is that if you saw here at the bottom of our, uh, our source code, you can actually write in tests directly into your code so that instead of Zig build run, we can do Zig build test. And that actually invokes every test that we write into. I think that's really good. I know, I know it's, it's not very hip today to love, uh, unit testing. I still am a big fan of unit testing where it makes sense. Uh, this is, I, I, I love testing. Testing should be built in. I think it's a huge language flop if testing is not like a, a front and center thing. Like even if you hate unit testing, you must admit testing should be a pre-thought, not an afterthought. Like I just think that it's just crazy town. The fact that there's, it's just crazy to me that like testing is not, even even kind of what Go did with their testing. I wish they would have, they, I wish they would have went harder into their test. I hate that you have to have third party stuff to get good testing. It just bothers me. It really bothers me. Testing should always be first class every time. Um, I actually, so, so I don't really get unit, I don't get unit test anxiety when I don't have unit tests. What I like unit tests for, honestly, is whenever I come to a piece of code in which I cannot implement within 30 seconds inside my brain, right? Like, it's not like, oh, I know the answer to this thing. For me, that screams, I use a unit test as a form of implementation, meaning I implement what I think I want, then I go to a test and try to drive through completion the correctness of it all, right? So I, I, I don't like TDD because TDD is you write your tests and then you write your code. I like to write my code, get it kind of how I want, I believe I've done it correctly, and then do some tests to make sure that it's correct, right? To make sure that I, I've done it. And I, I, I rarely test my code, but when I test it, it's in places in which you can't immediately understand the code, right? I, there's definitely like a, I, I don't do red, green refactor. I don't do any of that bullshit. I, I'm a very practical, pragmatic individual, which means that until it is hard, uh, what third party thing you need for Golang? Oh, uh, the testing, like to get good, to get good testing, that T library sucks. It's a bunch of if else's and I don't like, I don't, I want assert. I want just simple diff assert. Like go, every time you do something in go, it's three lines of code, right? It's if this thing is not nil, then fail for this reason, ending squirrely brace. Well, this might be new. Assert equal must be new, but I just want assert. I just want effing assert. I want to say assert that this is equal to that. That is it, <laughs> right? And it just drives me bonkers, okay? So that's my only thing. Nice content. Hey, love from France? Well, have a good one. Yeah, that's just a me personal situation. All right, let's keep on going. Sorry about the little, sorry about like this whole like breakdown, getting all excited about testing. I get really excited about testing, okay? Uh, you know what I mean? I get really excited about do testing. Our code. So we can do zig build test. It'll do the same thing. It'll compile all of our tests and it'll say, yep, we ran all these functions and none of them failed. So all of your, te your tests passed, which is pretty cool. Another, by the way, I'm using, uh, I forget, I forget what unit test framework I'm using for, for C++, but it's such a nightmare. Like the, how I have to write my code to be able to unit test it in C++ is such a, just a doo-doo head. I hate, I don't like their, their, 
I don't like their how they do abstract classes slash interfaces in C++. I don't like any of their patterns. I don't like any of it. Just, just It's emotionally painful, okay? I would just like to let you know that it's emotionally painful. Really important part of SIG that I like is, again, it's meant to be a systems programming language. If you've ever coded in a language like C or assembly, one of the big problems is transposing your code from, you know, x86-64 on Linux, and maybe you want to move that code to a you know, MIPS processor running Windows. I know it doesn't exist, but you see my point. What you can do here is you can do zig build. Do you see this down here? You may not be able to see this down here. I3, by the way. Hey, nice I3. Dude, I love the fact that he has default I3. He straight up has default I3 just like me. Let's go. That's what we're talking about. Get that default. Okay. Default, 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 default. Right? Oh, it's so good. I'm, I'm default gang all the way. Tac D target, and I can say equals x86 64. I go away, you, you do. Windows, and this will actually produce a Windows executable. I like that. I uh, that's also I can't crazy. Run it I'm not on Windows, but I think that's a really, really important feature. It Here is an important. Feature. You can. Exe, yeah. which will do the. You, I mean, building a modern language today without handling all the different platforms would be just nuts. The, I mean. The fact, again, C++, you have to learn two languages. You have to learn C++, which takes, if you don't know the 21 days to learn C++, it takes about 90 years, and then you travel back in time and then kill your previous self, and boom, you've learned C++ in 21 days. But then you have to learn CMake, which is like a whole other thing. This is just, like, this just needs to be a thing exact same thing on the Windows ABI. So really, really interesting. Another big piece that I really, really enjoyed from using this language is the security baseline of a language. So if you are learning to code, but you are writing a project in C, you should not be doing that because C is known to be a very dangerous. Mm, I don't know. That That's a hard, I don't know. I, 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 you know, low level learning for the most part, I fully agree with them almost universally, but I do think there is something good about writing at least one project in C. I think it's a great learning experience because it just feels extremely raw, right? Uh, in the sense that you're just, I mean, you only have a few primitives, you're mapping memory or structs over memory. It just feels really raw, very easy to mess a bunch of stuff up. I feel like you kind of have to go over that just so that you can, you can experience it. I think he's saying if you're trying to ship it to other people, I think, I mean, I've had to ship some C code to some people. I think it's great to do it at least once. I had to ship a driver for this thing. Uh, let's see, is it plugged in? Little Netflix test device, right? So sometimes I just need the test stuff. We call it a little Odroid, just like, like a simple little basic uh, television processor. So if I just want to test on device, this is something that we just internally test on because that way we can, I can like, I can like, log on to it and see what happens i can run debuggers on it and all that kind of stuff but i had to drive i had to write a video driver for that thing and so it's like it's good writing something in c is good it's good for it's good for your soul it's good for your soul everyone should do it i think everyone should write at least one program in c and experience it this language it's very easy for a new but i can agree with you that a c for a brand new person shipping it to somebody would be very difficult but my very first job was embedded programming with C, shipping it to the government. It was extremely difficult, but it taught me a lot. In C, you should not be doing that because C is known to be a very dangerous language. It's very easy for a new programmer to make errors when you're writing C that leave your code vulnerable to attack. I tried to do this on stream. I tried to use Zig to make a program that was able to be hacked. So th what this piece of Zig code does is it creates a TCP server, it binds on a port, and then it listens for a message from the user. What I really, really like about Zig is that it does have security in mind from the go. All the functions are being used like uh, <laughs> Rust splices <laughs> where the types have associated length values to them, meaning it's really, really, really hard to allow the programmer to make a vulnerable condition in this language. Everything okay. lengthwise and memory management wise is done under the hood for what, there's, what he's saying is that there's no, like, Sterlin, or uh, what's it called, uh, uh, buff copy, whatever, what is it called, stir copy? What's the thing called where there's, like, the stir n copy versus stir copy, where you're copying in versus you're copying in with a length? There's, like, all those different ones, stir copy versus stir n copy or stir copy n. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, in C, you have to you have to manage between use the length versus, yeah, stir copy. I forget what it's called. It's been a while now. But there's, like use the end ones versus don't use the end ones and the non end ones just like every time every yeah print f print f like i dude i always explode myself 
because of that stupid uh, Sturm Mem buff copy end. <laughs> Classic Sturm Mem buff copy end, right? For you without this having awesome. to explicitly control the Beautiful. languages. So I spent literally two hours <sighs> trying to make this language. Oh, and don't forget slash n. Slash n gets me every time. Who here has not been crushed by slash n? Who here has not caused some damn buffer problem because you forgot about slash n or not slash n slash zero every single time slash zero every time my life is just one big slash zero segmentation fault it happens every single time in my entire lifetime i i don't i just i hate it i get it it gets me every damn time break and i and always I couldn't forget do it, it. So i really really always. like always another important piece of this language is the documentation so any new language you're gonna have to learn how to code it and the ziglang.org does a really good job of documenting the language everything from the standard library down to the types and basically every feature that the language has so you have like your vectors Beautiful. you have your pointer concepts here you have your volatiles your non-volatiles uh everything that the test can i pause it for a quick second why 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 did c plus plus and zig and rust call them vectors is there like some sort of documentation i'm missing on why it's called a vector because like every time i hear the term vector I, I i assume it's because it's it's based off the mathematical idea of a uh, of a one by n matrix uh you know calling it a vector but every time i hear a vector i always think like vec3 or a vec4 right like are we talking about uh are we talking about a three-dimensional one, or are we talking about like a quaternion stored in a vector? I think it's simply, I know, just for me, I don't understand why it's called a vector, because I always associate a vector with like a constant time. Yeah, get the hell out of here, Benny, with all your C++. Get him out. Benny comes in here trying to talk about C++, and so we banned that ass. So get this, like I'm over here and I'm all like, hey, oh, something, something about vectors. And then Benny comes in here, starts yapping his mouth about C++. Karen, we got... C++ started vector. Oh. Karen, I got to go pick up a laptop. I may or may not have thrown one out of a window that needs to be refurbished. Do you know any refurbishers of laptops? All right, get Benny back in. Let's keep on going. Get Benny back in. Sweet allows you to do is. Oh, there's a link. Link it. Link it to me afterwards. Link it to me. It's afterwards. documented here in the documentation, so I found that very, very We're enjoyable. E ignorant. Also, they have the entire standard library mapped out into documentation where it shows you the types that it has and also if those types are able to throw errors you have to handle in the specific rust uh, error handling scheme so that's pretty cool too rust i think there is a fundamental scheme. question though that is still unanswered in this language and the question is why zig why would you have a new language like this if things like rust already exist yeah i think please. we are moving into a world where if you're learning a new language you should be learning type safe languages that are not breakable you know to a certain extent like rust the problem is it is very hard to justify teaching rust to a new programmer i keep going back and forth on this one sorry i wanted to pause it before he says his thing i i, I really do go back and forth on this at first i really do think TypeScript is probably the best for a beginner. It's easy to learn. You can move really quickly. You can get somebody seeing something. You can see it happening. It becomes quite simple. And then you can go into like a harder, better language. Like, like, like understand the fundamentals of programming and then learn about something that's not programming, right? And, or, you know, concepts of programming. That way it's like a little easier. You know, it's an easier transition. I keep saying this, but I keep kind of going back to this idea that am I wrong about that? I almost feel like I'm wrong about that. And, and what I mean by that is that if you if you think about it, there's concepts and there's like these, there's unknown knowns in world, right? Like I, I forget, I think was it Donald Rumsfeld? Who, I forgot who said this, right? There's known knowns, there's known unknowns, and then there's unknown unknowns. But there's actually a fourth category, which is unknown knowns. Like things you know that you don't realize you know. And the pro one of the reasons why Rust is super hard is because you come into it with unknown knowns. You have this like construct of how you view the world, and you you will you will build and 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 create software in this like unknown or yeah this unknown known way. And it's just kind of like like for me it's a huge gut thing, right? Uh, I'm I'm very very fast at uh like building software and that's because i kind of have like this internal guide but i don't really know why i do it anymore i just know that i build it this way because 
it it feels right. And I'm sure there's better ways to build software, blah, 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 blah. But when it comes to Rust and learning a language for the first time, how much do you start like developing that internal guide that just makes Rust even harder to build? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, instincts would be a good term for unknown knowns, right? You know, you don't know why you know the thing, but you feel like this is inherently right. And so I, I'm very curious if that actually makes it harder to learn Rust. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe it is a lot harder. I don't know. I actually don't know. I, I can't say that it's good, bad, or, or not. You know? You know? Because Rust in itself is already a very difficult language. I highly suggest that if you're learning to program, you don't learn Rust as your first language for that reason. It's a very complicated language that makes things safer, but you have to know what things are unsafe before you can make things safer. Zig, I can, on the I other can buy hand, that argument. is much easier for the user to learn. This code reads a lot more like Python or C than it does like Rust and makes the syntax a lot easier to hold on to. So where does Zig fit in in the systems programming namespace? I think where it fits is if you already know the basics of programming but want to learn a type-safe language that isn't as complicated as Rust and get your hands dirty with doing some embedded systems projects that don't have to take the Rust language into account, Zig is the language for you. All yeah, I, I'm curious about Zig because obviously there's the whole null problem. There's the whole, uh, there's still errors are still kind of raw errors. I don't know if they have enums as in like some types, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. You know, like, I don't know if you get the same. I, I worry about it. I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not. I don't buy that Zig's a great type safe first language. Uh, I think TypeScript's a better type safe. My big problem with Zig just in general is this, is that C has a huge momentum behind it. And I think for Zig to, to win, it's going to take a series of really motivated contributors to actually make Zig have all the things it needs to compete with say C in the embedded world or Rust in the embedded worlds, right? Like those things are very important and they're very, very hard to do, right? Like to, to get enough motivated people to do all that, it's a lot of work. And so I think that Zig, I think will continuously fight against trying to catch up until they reach a mass of people that's fast enough. Um, I think that, I, I think uh, embedded is a great hurdle for Zig. I think that Zig, I think Zig's best argument is that it's a good replacement for C, and it feels mostly like C. Uh, it's less hard than Rust. I, I would agree with that. It took me less time to get something up and running in Zig. Uh, but I don't know. I still have this hard part with his, uh, is that until Zig has a big enough momentum in the open source world and its tooling has proper package management and all the things that's really needed to make it really slick, I think it's just going to struggle. I think it's going to struggle and the hard part is that there's so many super motivated Rust stations that anytime Zig catches up, Rust is already caught up plus a year ahead. And so I, I think that's just going to take, it's going to take a lot of effort. You know what I mean? I think if you're very competent at C, switching to Zig is easier. So maybe that's kind of the play is that you want more type safe stuff. And so therefore Zig is just like a great transition, natural transition from C. And also Zig has a better compiler interaction story with C, right? I don't know if it has like a drop-in replacement or an easy interaction with with C, but I, I swear I read something where it's it's very easy to interrupt between the two and linking and all blah, 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 blah. So very curious about it. Is this the Rust killer? <clears throat> I don't think it is. I think Rust is going to win because I think Rust's biggest strength isn't that it's a systems programming language. I think Rust's biggest strength is that it can act like a general programming, like a general purpose programming language. Do you know what I mean? I think that's its biggest strength. And that's going to be really hard to beat because you have system capability, general purpose programming language. And so I think that that's really amazing. I tried Carbon, but they didn't have a compiler. What am I supposed to do? Write it on a piece of paper and imagine how it feels? <laughs> oh, no, right? Like, what am I, uh, what am I supposed to do with Carbon? Oh, yeah, look at this carbon code. It's incredible. One day when this I can execute this, it's going to be amazing, 